Look at that mana orb. Being beautiful blue, having that perfect spherical shape, the nectar of mages, the juicy fuel of spells, and it is completely pointless. Spamming spells in my game is fun. And to not limit that, I have had the mana regeneration rate set very high in all episodes. Let's say you could run out of mana. Then there would be gameplay sequences where you are running away from monsters while waiting for regeneration. That's not fun. Obviously, there could be mana potions to help that. But then you would need a shop to buy them from, and some currency, such as gold, gained by completing waves or killing enemies. But if there's a shop, there should be other buyable items, not only mana potions. My point is, it can go a long way, and then the game would have a big scope and long delays in release. What I propose instead is to find a minimal viable product and stick to that plan without adding additional features. Improve by subtraction, not by adding new systems. Enough said, it's go time. So long, mana orb. I don't need you anymore. I need something else though. Balance. In this episode, let's try to even out the classes using a data-driven approach. Step 1. We need to quantify their powers. Our scoring system will be very simple. We count the enemies defeated. I have updated the game over screen to include not only this information, but also show the damage statistics so we know which spell is too strong or too weak. Step 2. We need similar circumstances for the measurements. We will be using autoplaying bots again, which will move in the same pattern. The game rules and wave patterns are also the same, and all the bots will be using the Time Lock Utility spell. Simulations will be repeated 32 times, and we will take the average of that score as our final value. Step 3. Do the first round of measurements and display the output in a chart. This is 32 simulations played by the Pyromancer. 32 simulations played by the Ice Mage. Thirty-two simulations played by the Shaman. Putting them side by side tells us that Ice Mage is a disgustingly imbalanced powerhouse. Why is Shaman so weak? Looking at the spell statistics, one thing I notice is Meteor is supposed to be an epic spell yet it barely deals any damage. I think I know why. The radius of one explosion is too small, so the meteor shower misses a lot, even if the crowd is big. By increasing the explosion radius, we are buffing both the pyromancer and the shaman, without touching the ice mage at all. This seems to be a great idea. Let's test this. I increased the size of the explosions by 33%, and looking at the spell damage chart reflects this nicely. Then from 1297, to 1847. How does it look on the chart with all the classes? It definitely made the Pyromancer stronger. But what about the Shaman? An average of 17 extra score per session. To be honest, I expected better results. Still, there's much more we can do. I know, I just had a speech about not adding new systems. Let's cheat and consider it a part of the original plan, since this makes classes more unique and builds upon the existing spell system. Passive spells cannot be cast by the player, they are either automatic or activated by an event. Here, I implemented a Thunder passive spell for the Shaman, which releases 3 bursts of lightning every few seconds. You can see it in action here. The purpose of this is to increase the offensive power of the Shaman, hoping that it brings the imbalance smaller. Let's repeat this with the Pyromancer. The passive spell of the Pyromancer is Fiery Vengeance, which activates when the hero is hit 3 times in a short time span. It releases a massive explosion with high knockback, giving a chance to escape from an imminent defeat. Having done the code, this is what it looks like in the game. Now that we have got these passives done, let's look at the charts again. Now all classes will be on par with the Ice Mage, right? Hmm. Balancing games is fun. Let's not give up yet and buff the Shaman one more time. 
Since it has lightning spells, make them stun or shock the enemies for a fragment of a second, rendering them immobile. Here it is already in action. How does it look on the charts? Please give me better results. Finally, with the increased explosion radius, the passive thunder spell and the short shock effect, the shaman is not so terribly weak. Let's compare the first measurements with the last ones. The pyromancer had a nice growth of about 100 mobs per session, while the shaman increased its score by almost 150. Still, the ice mage is too strong. I wanted to avoid nerfing it, but it seems it is a must. Also, we still haven't given the Ice Mage a passive spell, which would only make it stronger, so we are definitely not done yet. Anyway, this is all that could fit into this episode. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you the next time where we end this balanced misery once and for all.